for the last few days, I've been searching my heart and my soul, uh, looking for ways to describe how I felt about what I called my boys. Uh, and after much searching, uh, I want to apologize to the family, uh, to the students, and to all of you here this morning, because there's not enough words to describe or do justice to the lives these young men lived. Their greatness and their legacy is a testimony to the friends they had, to the church family they belonged to, to the God they walked with, and to the moms who deeply cared for them. And uh, Wendy and Shree, through all these emotions, through all these doubts and fears and questions, please know one thing, and I've told you this several times for the past couple days. Know this, you did a great job raising these men. You did a great job raising our boys. You did, you did. These young men who I considered my sons in a spiritual sense, they were truly one of a kind. They were special. Uh, they dared to be different for the sake of what was right. When I first began in youth ministry, I was always told that if you could find one student who just truly got it, you could build a, a ministry around that one student. I didn't know how true that was until I met these two young men. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of building a youth ministry around two students who got it. Our youth ministry was built on Jesus Christ and on the shoulders of boys just like this. When I think about my boys, Kenny and Bird Dog, I think about two words that stick out. The, word are, the words are servants and influences. They were very influential. Um, I remember the first time I met Bird Dog. It was right back here in the, the Family Life Center. His grandma had introduced me to him and said, this boy needs a place to plug in and to serve. And um, from that time on, he never left my side. He had a heart to get plug in, plugged in here at the life of Tuxen, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, he began serving, and the people around here got word that this boy was a servant, that we began to give him job after job after job after job after job. We gave him so much on his plate that he decided he couldn't do it alone, so he grabbed Kenny, and he said, Kenny, let's do it together. And together, these boys served and served and served. They did everything we asked of them because their hearts were hearts of servants. They spent so much time here at this church loving and giving and serving. Uh, my boys were servants. We spent so much time here that some would think that um, we lived here. And uh, on occasions, we actually did. Um, every so often, we would have what we called a night of sheer manliness. Uh, we would come down, and we would camp out at the church, and all night long, we would just play. And uh, ladies, I know you've always wondered, what do, what do these guys do when they hang out here at the church at this so-called night of manliness? And so here's a glimpse of what we did. First, these two guys, as if they needed it, would fill up on energy drinks um, they, because they wanted to stay up all night long, or at least they wanted to have enough fuel to carry them over to our late night Taco Bell run where they would get a big gulp of Mountain Dew. Um, I don't know why these guys needed energy drinks. I really don't. They were full of life and energy. Um, then we'd come back here. We would divide the rest of our time playing Tiger Woods golf on the Xbox, which I dominated these guys at. Um, we would spend a lot of time talking about girls. Um, and, I, you know, they, these guys would try to convince me that the hardest part about their life was being so good looking. And um, they, uh, they talked about how girls would chase them around in paparazzi fashion and um, wouldn't leave them alone. There's a hand in the bag. That girl chased him around. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, maybe by the hand, I wasn't quite sure if that was true, but um, I believed it was. They were good-looking guys. But um, my favorite thing we would do 
that night and those nights other than golf would be we would go over here to the Family Life Center in the gym and we invented a little game called flinch. And this is something only guys do. Um, we would stand about 20 feet apart from each other and uh, we would throw dodgeballs at each other and see if we could hit each other in the crotch. Yes. Um, just one of those things. It was our favorite game. Uh, but this is what we would do. And several times throughout um, throughout our, our, our nights like this, we would play uh, tag throughout the whole church. And while we enjoyed it, uh, we became a little scared when hiding in God's ho- in, in his house. Uh, we never understood how one of the most sacred places in the world become, can become so scary when you turn the lights off. Uh, we, we didn't know what the deal was. Um, but they were servants, but they were also very, very influential. Um, when I think about influence, I do not think that I know it, of anyone outside of these, these two guys who had in, more influence on their peers. Uh, in today's world, where peer pressure runs rampant, it's great to know that there are peers out there who are pressuring their friends to do the right things. We are all here today because of the influence that they had on our life. They touched us in ways that, again, words cannot describe. They were very, very influential people. And as I thought about their influence in our life, I don't need a show of hands, but I, I could only speculate in here. Um, how many how many ladies in this place did Bird Dog ever hit on? Um, yeah. Uh, Dr. Shiva? Uh, no? Um... Um, he he leveraged his influence in that way as well. He was um, he he was he was a ladies' man in a sense. In a sense, he didn't uh, he didn't he wasn't successful a lot, but man, he was persistent. He was persistent. Um, Kenneth, he was a ladies' man in his own way, a ladies' man in his own way. Uh, in, in our time together, uh, Kenneth had a handful of girlfriends, but he single-handedly. He set the record for the amount of breakups in that that short period of time. Um, These breakups would be followed by a a quick makeup session. I did not say make out session, Um, but um, he would make up with his girlfriends 20 minutes later or so. Um, They would go, they would break up, they would go back out maybe three or four times a day. Uh, It was an amazing, amazing thing to watch. It was so hard to keep track of. But all I know is that uh, Kenneth must have set some kind of record for that. So there's a record in that. Uh, one of the very first events that we ever participated in together was a Disciple Now event a few years ago. The theme of that, that weekend was Echo, and the tagline was, What You Do in Life Echoes in Eternity. Um, my boys took that to heart, and they decided they wanted their life to count. They didn't want their life to simply pass them by. They wanted to make a difference in this world, and that they did. Their love for Christ was evident, and Christ's love compelled them to love everyone else around them. As a side note, one of my um, favorite memories of these guys came from that Disciple Now weekend. Um, I got together with uh, another youth pastor buddy of mine at St. James United Methodist across the the way, and uh, we planned for our guys to go over and scare his guys late one night. Uh, the plan worked perfectly, except for um, one part. Um, Bird Dog got kidnapped. Um, he got kidnapped by our friends at St. James. And I guess the old saying is true, that when you're being chased, you don't have to be the fastest. You just got to be faster than one guy. And uh, while w- none of us were ever faster than Kenny, we were all faster than Bird Dog. Um, the rest of the story goes, we snuck back up to the house where they were holding him hostage, and um, they had him sitting in this glass window in a chair, duct taped to a chair, and um, they were beating him with drumsticks. Um, we rescued him, and uh, I know it sounds harsh, but um, I know these guys will say it's one of the best nights of their life. 